How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato. You are watching Nature Now. Now, in today's video, I'm going to say a few things about arthropods. Those are creatures like insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods, which are millipedes and centipedes. But I'm going to really focus on my favorite groups, the insects and arachnids. Let's get rolling. So, you might notice by looking at my channel, I've got all sorts of videos on insects, arachnids, and other invertebrates. And well, there's a big reason for that. The reason being, you don't have to go far to find them. And what wondrous variety they have. They come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and colors. Not to mention behaviors. You've got predator and prey. Just the world of insects and arachnids alone have enough volumes to fill an entire library. You've got tons of beetles, Wasps, bees, butterflies, moths, stink bugs, grasshoppers, and many more. With arachnids, of course, you've got a huge variety of spiders, scorpions, Ticks and mites, harvest men, and all sorts of other arachnids. Spiders are incredibly amazing creatures. We all know they're famous for producing silk for both their homes and ensnaring their prey. Some spiders might be pretty big, like the writing spiders that you find in the goldenrod meadows in late summer, and some of them are tiny. My favorite group are the jumping spiders. They are highly intelligent and very interactive. And I have to admit, they're pretty cute. Spiders, just like some groups of the insect world, have evolved and modified specific venoms for subduing and digesting their prey. Speaking of silk, various species of butterfly and moth also produce silk, although that generally tends to be when they're in their larval form, known as caterpillars. Just think about silkworms and our extremely expensive silk industry that has sculpted countries and given their riches over millennia. Now, one thing that allows so much variety is their exoskeleton. Their skeletons are on the outside of their body, whereas we have endoskeletons on the inside of our body. Their exoskeleton is composed of chitin, which is a very amazing material. It's very lightweight and can take on any size, shape, and color without weighing very much at all. And as I said, their exoskeletons can take on many different appearances. It even has a capability of bending light, allowing insects to even sport the color blue. Blue, however, is usually an illusion in the wildlife kingdom. What allows this are microscopic structures that actually absorb all colors of the spectrum and reflect back only that of blue, giving us the impression of a blue beetle or wasp such as the cuckoo wasp. A great way to prove this is scientists have ground up the exoskeletons of different insects, even bird feathers like peacock feathers. Once ground up, they usually turn like green or brown. They lose their blue spectrum. Also, when you wet them, many of them also lose their blue spectrum. But what's really cool is there's actually an insect in the world that truly adorns itself in the color blue. It has a true blue pigment. And that's a type of butterfly, but it's not in this country, so I can't really show you. Some of the beautiful colors represented in insects and arachnids are red, blue, brown, black, striped and banded invertebrates, and of course green is a very popular color among insects. It allows them to blend into their environment and avoid those predators. Predators such as birds, mammals, and other invertebrates. And if their bodies don't provide enough camouflage or stealth, some species will just go ahead and create their own. Just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, take a look at this lacewing larva right here. I'm sure you have learned by now that the insect and arachnid world is definitely a dramatic one. 
As I said before, you've got the hunters and the hunted. Obvious ones are spiders. Almost all species of spider are meat eaters, usually preying on insects and other invertebrates. Some spiders, though, can even feed on baby snakes, mice, frogs, and even birds. A very famous insect that most people know about is the praying mantis. And of course, the praying mantis is a stealth predator. They are often very camouflaged and they'll wait for a prey to happen by. When the prey is close enough, they'll snatch it up using their modified forelegs. And that reminds me of another type of insect that is very similar to the praying mantis. Those are the ambush bugs. They also have very similar modified front legs that they use for snatching up their prey, but they've got a proboscis or a beak that pierces its victim and injects a paralyzing, digesting enzyme. In other words, they are venomous. There are plenty of carnivorous ant species as well. Some of them will feed on carrion. Other species hunt down and take out their prey. And of course, you have ant species that feed on nectar, pollen, and have more of a vegetarian diet. Bees and wasps often feed on nectar, and of course, bees love pollen. Some species of bee have even found a way to turn nectar into honey, and that is the apidae family. As I said in a previous video, there are thousands and thousands of species of bee and there's even over a hundred thousand species of wasp out there. Also remember that certain families of bees, wasps, and ants have evolved a highly complex social system, complete with multiple cast members such as nurses, workers, drones, all governed by a single monarch known as the queen. Now, of course, talking about arachnids and insects, I can't help to include myriapods too, though. The Myriapoda family is pretty much millipedes and centipedes, and the millipedes have become my favorite of the two. Just take the cyanide producing millipedes for example. They are often black with highlights of red or yellow or even both, and as an amazing defense mechanism, they can produce hydrogen cyanide gas. Wow! As a child, I often found myself completely entranced by gazing into the landscape of just a flower pot. In that world, I imagined myself walking along about the size of an ant. Before I knew it, those blades of grass and plant stems were towering trees and jungles in which I'd find myself lost. Watching ants, ladybugs, and other insects go about their daily activities. And by the way, when that movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, came out, I thought to myself, you know what, I'd be way too afraid to venture out too far because I know what insects and arachnids do. If they found one of those people walking about in the backyard, I'm pretty sure they would hunt them. And us being humans, we wouldn't have stood a chance. So that was almost a horror movie for me. Not even the aquatic world is free of insects and spiders. There are all sorts of diving and swimming spiders, Many insects that hunt both above and below the water surface. And as you may or may not know, many insects start off their lives in the aquatic environments. Some of those insects include dragonflies and damselflies, and of course mosquitoes, and caddisfly larvae, which are really cool because they construct their homes out of little bits of leaves and twigs and pebbles, and they blend in perfectly to the aquatic world. Those are really cool creatures to discover and observe, often in vernal pools and ponds throughout the entire country. As I grew older, over the years, I realized I fell in love with insects and arachnids especially. Watching them among their habitats is like observing the plains of Africa with the equivalents of lions, tigers, elephants, gazelle, and all the other creatures you might find out there transforming plants and pebbles into boulders, mountains, and towering forests. We also owe our existence to these animals in a big way. We have the pollinators, decomposers, terraformers like the ants, beetles, and millipedes, and even beautiful musicians such as crickets and katydids. I even love the cicadas come the hot days of summer. In many cultures, 
Insects themselves are even used as food. And it might not be too many years in the future before we Americans also adopt that culinary practice. If you think that's weird, just consider things like lobsters and crabs. They really are arthropods and they're not very different from insects when you really think about it. I often find these creatures to be very impressive. Sure, there might be plenty of pests such as mosquitoes and ticks, but they have all earned their place in the world, feeding many amphibians and birds and even mammals like mice and bats. Take the little brown bat for example. That species will actually consume half its body weight in insects every night, often eating up to a thousand mosquitoes an hour. There are insects that fly, run, walk, and plenty that hop. When you take the time to stop and observe these creatures, you'll soon learn that it's never really a dull moment. They'll dig and construct their homes, they'll hunt and forage for food, They'll spend lots and lots of time grooming and communicating with other members of their species. There are even people in Japan who construct or purchase beautiful homes up in the mountains specifically so that they can listen to the chorus of insects at night as they fall asleep. And of course this video wouldn't do any justice if I forgot to include one of my favorite insects of all time. That is the bioluminescent fireflies and lightning bugs. How many creatures in the world besides ocean life can even produce light on their own? I mean, how cool is that? Who doesn't love lightning bugs? Well, there you go. That's why I love insects and arachnids so much. It's an exciting world out there filled with beauty, wonder, and even horror. So I hope you guys, when you have the chance, might go for a walk in the woods and look closer when you see an insect or spider nearby. Thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching. And remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.